Hello friends, welcome to Football Friday in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to Maryland Week and welcome into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. You know what time it is, it's time for four down. Where's Matt? Where is he? Matt's on assignment. Matt's on assignment. In our nation's capital. He'll be in College Park for full coverage of the photo side for LettermanRow.com. We're holding down the Ford here in Columbus until we get there to join him though. The 40 year vets in May. That's Andy Baxter. I'm Spencer Holbrook. Thanks. Matt's going to say thanks for joining me here at our nation's capital. <laughs> First Forrest Gump reference of the year. All right. Let's get on to bold predictions, fellas. Bold prediction. Uh, Tim, you can go first. I'm going first. Yep. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the one I had last week, except I'm just going to go with the yardage part. Uh, uh, CJ Stroud will throw, will throw for 400 plus against Maryland. Forget about the touchdowns. He got five touchdown passes last week, but didn't get to the didn't get to the 300 yard mark, much less 400. Personally, I mean, obviously he got over 300 passes, but uh, C.J. Stroud will go for 400 plus passing yards against Maryland. Easy enough. Good prediction, Tim. Andy, I'm going with five sacks for Ohio State. Maryland's given up 12 sacks in his last two games combined. We saw the pressure last week against Indiana. Jim Knowles has talked about it. Wanted to cut guys like. Jack Sawyer loose. I think we're going to see a couple guys get home. Five total sacks for the Buckeyes in this win. Well, wait, is that five or five possibly plus? I'd say Just five, five total. Okay. Five. All right, he's making a statement. Uh, you guys went too fast. I'm trying to think of mine, and I think I'll just go with uh, 250 yards on the ground for Ohio State. I think the Buckeyes are going to put up a lot of points in this game, but I don't know how much – in the second half, they'll want to risk anybody of repute, as you like to say, Tim, uh, as far as just getting to the next week and being healthy. I think the second half, you will see a heavy dose of the Ohio State running game still trying to work out some kinks, get some things figured out. So I think Ohio State will be able to do that against Maryland and feel confident going into next week after having a decent game on the ground. I don't know who's gonna be carrying the ball for them. I don't think it really matters because down Hayden showed he can have 100 yards. Xavier Johnson showed he could weave through a bad defense. Uh, Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, we obviously know what they can do. If so they play. If, if they're on the field. So, you know, even, <coughs> even a guy like Chip Trena, maybe you get him some run if he's able to go. 250 yards on the ground for Ohio State. I think that's I think that's a pretty pretty fair assessment of the situation here. One, one quick, you know, uh, the thing you said about getting the guys off the field. You know, it's funny they didn't do that last week, you know. I mean, because they had that game in hand last week. So yeah. I'm interested to see if they do get this game in hand, which isn't a guarantee uh, what they do do in that regard. Because last week, you know, guys could get hurt last week too. Offensive uh, player of the game, Tim. Uh, I already said C.J. Stroud's going Go ahead. 400 plus, right? Take him. My offensive, no, my offensive player of the game. And boy, this is going to jinx it because last week I picked Dewan Jones and he would have been if he had played. Because you saw what Josh Fryer did. Yeah, and uh, I'm sticking with that. You know, I'm voting. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with. Uh, this is a little bit sticking my neck out because I don't know really know who's going to play at running back. Who's going to start? I'm going to write a story about Dallin Hayden, uh, just that he's ready if they need him to start. You know, I'm not going like we all wrote about Mayan Williams the week after he had that hell of a game, right? And yeah. he didn't even make the trip yeah. to Michigan State. So you always got to watch. You know, who's getting on and getting off the bus. I'm going to go with Dallin Hayden is my offensive player of the game because you say they're going to rush for 250 plus. I'm going to go with your expertise because you started out this whole thing with that Jim Nance line. Hello, friends. Andy? I'm going Marvin Harrison Jr. I just think that what he's been doing is ridiculous. He's also one of their most consistent performers. I think he goes over 150 yards receiving. Ohio State had two 100-yard receivers last year against Maryland. This Maryland pass defense hasn't gotten that much better. The defense is a little bit better overall, but that's not saying much considering that it was a dumpster fire last year for Maryland. So I think that Marvin's going to have his time. I also think the wide receiver position right now, like Ameka Abuka, you know, left last week's game. We don't exactly know what happened. I don't know how much he's going to play this week. Julian Fleming's been struggling a little bit, has had a couple of drops the last couple of weeks. So I think Marvin's just their most consistent performer, obviously their best performer there, and I think he's going to have a big game. Oh, that bolstered my 400 plus. Well, this one's, this one's going to this one's gonna do it even like more. Bolsters. This one's going to do it even more because I'm taking Julian Fleming. Uh, Ohio State needs a full strength receiving core uh, next week in the game, the rivalry game. Uh, Emeka Ibuka, I know, is going to be fine as far as production standpoint. He hasn't been as good the last few weeks. He needs to be better. I think he will be better. 
Uh, I don't, don't think that's a very bold statement to make on this bold prediction show. Julian Fleming's had a few drops the last few weeks. I think Ohio State needs to get that confidence back in him, get him back going in the right direction, get him, you know, knowing that he can do Go it against South Michigan. I, I, I just think that this is a great opportunity for Ohio State to get Julian Fleming settled back in to be able to, to work him back into this offense and let him know, hey, you know, CJ Stroud still trusts you. We still trust you. Brian Hartline, Ryan Day, everybody is still, you know, they know that you're capable of doing this. I think Julian Fleming's going to show up. He's going to have a really nice bounce back effort in this game and have a lot of confidence heading into a game that, you know, stars are made in next week. So, yeah. Who did I pick as my defensive player of the week? Did I pick Lathan, Lathan Ransom last week? I'm trying to I don't remember, remember Tim. I no, we remember. all picked defensive linemen. We did. Almost all. We yeah. did. Yeah. I'm going to go with Lathan Ransom as my deep. Are we already jumped to that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with Lathan Ransom. He's going to have a couple of big plays. That, you know, you can sense it. This guy is playing upper echelon right now, and he's only going to get better. He is. And uh, so I'm going to go with Lathan Ransom. I'm not going to really – because I don't know if he's going to have two interceptions or what, but you're going to see him making plays on Saturday, and that's what counts in my book. By the way, trivia note uh, – I said north south a while ago. The uh, Maryland field actually runs northwest southeast. Hmm. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Defensive, you, in case you're watching from home. <laughs> the defensive player of the game, Andy. I'm going to go with JT Tui Malouel. I just think that you know he's had the most pressures for us this year, 25 on the team, but hasn't always had the sacks to show for it. I think part of my sack prediction is that JT gets a couple. We see every different week there's one defensive lineman that gets home a couple times. Last week it was Jack Sawyer. You know, sometimes it's been Zach Harrison. Sometimes it's been JT. I think it's going to be JT again this week against Maryland. Maryland is trying to get their left guard back. He's had a concussion, been out a couple games. That offensive line has not been great. Not only has uh, Talia Tagovailoa not been great at, you know, avoiding sacks, they've also given up. They're tied for 104th nationally in sacks given up. So I think, you know, the numbers are there for JT to have quite a day. Try to decide, because I've got two fresh in the brain, um, but I think I'm going to go with Jordan Hancock. Uh, Cameron Brown had his moment last week. I think he's going to play well again. The other, the cornerback position, like you said, Tim, seems to be getting better and getting healthier at the right time. You said that on our, our Wednesday night practice report presented by Byers Auto. Yeah. You know, th this is one of those games where you get another corner, a lot of action. The corners are going to have to be good against these receivers, Rakeem Jarrett, Jacob Copeland, yeah. other guys. Um, they got some players, man. So I'm going to go with Jordan Hancock, maybe even throws in an interception. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised by that. I think he's playing pretty well. Getting him more snaps, getting him more comfortable to play with Denzel Burke, to play with Cameron Brown and, and those safeties, I think is going to be paramount this week. So I think he's going to have a nice game. Okay. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. And now we move on to the score predictions. Yeah, we actually do a score, right? We actually do a score, Tim. It's a, it's a real no, thing we I do. Don't, I, don't care, I don't care how it makes me look. I just think Ohio State's got that 50 look about them again. And, uh, you know, I guess what bothers me a little bit is uh, as bad as uh, Maryland's offense played last week, uh, the defense only gave up 30. Now it was raining. I'm talking about against, against Penn State. But that was against Penn State. Only? I mean, yeah, only thirty. I mean, I, I want to get. I want to see Ohio. I, I see Ohio State scoring in the fifties. I see Ohio State getting to the fifty mark. You see where I'm going with that? So I'm gonna go with it's supposed to be really pretty decent conditions on Saturday. Chilly, cold as the game goes on, uh, low forties to the high thirties. Uh, but everything else looks kind of ideal, sunny, etc. I'm gonna go with Ohio State fifty-two, Maryland seventeen. I don't think Ohio State covers. I think they win, but I think it's going to be 42-24. Wow. Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a nail-biter. I just yeah. think that Maryland will give them their best shot. Look, they've lost two in a row. They're still bowl eligible. Their season isn't over. Right. They can still reach eight wins, which they haven't done in quite a while. And they've got a lot of talent offensively. And, you know, this Ohio State defense has bent a lot of the time. You know, it's all bend, don't break. But I think they'll give up fair number of yards and some points, but Ohio State wins. Well, you remember I asked Jim Knowles before they played Penn State, this is the best offense you've gone against. I mean, first, it was the first offense they faced that was on the other side of the 50, meaning uh, like 48th or 49th in the country. And Penn State, you know, had, had a pretty decent game offensively against Ohio State until it mattered. 
and got shut <laughs> down. And you kind of, you know, you kind of had the similar point the other day. I think Maryland's like 60th or something in total offense, but they're 100, 120 yards behind Ohio State in that in that stat. I think they're in the 390s or something. Uh, but I just think this Ohio State defense. I don't know why I'm jumping in here. I just think this Ohio State defense is is feeling it right now. I just see them getting after these guys. That's why I picked Ohio, I picked them to only score 17. Guys, I'm trying to defend myself before I have to. So get it on tape. Currently in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, watching Ryan Day walk through the facility. Uh, in two of games as head coach at Ohio State against Maryland, the average score of these games is 69 and a half to 17 and a half. I don't know what it is. So you're saying I was conservative with my pick? I don't know exactly what it is about Maryland that brings out the absolute uh, yes, you do. dog in Ryan Day to just want to hang as many points as physically possible. Uh, I remember in 2019, he kicked an onside kick up, I think 21 to nothing on Maryland. Um, just to, I think maybe just to say that he did it. You remember um, the Chase Young episode? We're not gonna talk about that on this here episode, okay. Tim. Uh, right. But there's something about this rivalry, I guess, with Ryan Day that makes him uh, want to score points on Maryland. And so I'm going to predict that Ryan Day wants to score points on Maryland. I think Ohio State's going to score 63 points in this game. Wow. I think Maryland's going to get 21 because I like this offense. I really do. <coughs> and I actually agree more with you, Andy, about this being a decent little game here for a little bit. Um, and being, you know, I could see 42-24. I don't think that's a terrible score prediction. I just know what Ryan Day likes to do against Maryland. And I can't get that thought out of my head. So I'm going to take 63-24. I think Ohio State doesn't run it up, but also doesn't really take its foot off the gas against these guys. Yeah. And Ryan Day delivers yet another reminder to Mike Loxley of the, the discrepancies between these programs. And don't forget, the team that, that's given Michigan its best game so far this year was Maryland. Yes. They were in it. In the fourth quarter, they were in the game. This, But th that Maryland team is not the same as this one because this one has been beaten up. Yes. I mean, it's missing. I mean, their quarterback, you know, is not – Mobile, I mean, like the five sack thing. Uh, Talia is not as mobile as he was earlier in the year, et cetera. I can see all all that coming. I and and, and I agree with you. It may not be a blowout from the start because they they have some pretty good players yes. and stuff. And so you can see the fight coming. I just see Ohio State having too much across the board. Fellas, I, I keep defending my pick. You don't have to defend your pick, Tim. We haven't made you defend a pick yet this year. Fifty-two seventeen. I'm sticking with it. There you go. That's your score, and you're sticking to it. Uh, the next time we do one of these videos, uh, you know what it will be. It will be the week of the Ohio State-Michigan game. The next time we do a bold prediction show, a four downs show, make all these predictions, it will be Ohio State against Michigan uh, previewing that game in the horseshoe. For now, just like Ohio State, we're focused on Maryland and we're on to Maryland. We'll all three be in College Park. You'll, we'll see you guys there. Matt Parker will be there on the field taking photos. The 40-year vet Tim May, Andy Backstrom and I will be in the, the press box. Uh, you know, recounting everything we can from Ohio State, Maryland. Uh, these predictions are guaranteed to absolutely 100% come true, and we hope that you take betting advice from us. I promise. Uh, but for Tim, for Andy, I'm Spencer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Head to LettermanRoad.com for more coverage, and we'll see you there.